Hello everyone, welcome back to Glitz and Glitter. I got my clock mold out again. So maybe you guys saw the one last week that I did with the gears and I backed it in a nice black color and it was absolutely stunning. I used my Gold Rush glitter in there and the black alcohol ink and it was beautiful and I was gonna keep it for myself. And then immediately a friend of mine wanted it and I wasn't gonna sell it. And then I decided, okay, I'm gonna let her have it because she wanted me to duplicate it exactly. And I thought about it and I said, well, okay, you could take that one. I'm gonna make one more because black really, you know, it doesn't go with my house, but the gears did and the gold did and all that. So I bought more gears. But this time I'm going to do it a little different. I'm going to back it in a brown instead because I have a very rustic home and brown goes better than the black. So I let it go, even though I love that clock. Um, you can go back and watch it. It's just back about a week. So this time I'm going to do it in layers. So I'm gonna do my gold rush like I did before in this little groove with some UV resin and the glitter. Then I'm gonna pour a little bit of my, I'm gonna be using my Fast Cure because I want this to get done fairly quickly. Um, I'm gonna pour maybe an ounce or two ounces in and let it cure. And I'm going to put a layer of these in and then I'm going to pour more Fast Cure, let it cure and then put gears in. So I'm gonna do like a 3D effect of the gears and then the last layer will be backed in the dark brown. So that's my plan. What it looks like, I don't know. If I hate it, then I'll just go back and redo it like the first one that I did. So I don't think I'll hate it. I think it'll be nice. The first thing I'm gonna do is mix up some UV resin and some Gold Rush. So just take whatever UV resin you have. I'm going to put the glitter right into there and just kind of use a little dotting tool to get it in that little groove. And then we're gonna just cure it. That way we can move on to the next step right away. I'll probably be using my heat mat or my curing machine a lot for this project because the last one, I think I got it done in one day. And I don't think this is a one day deal seeing that it's already late afternoon when I'm starting this. So um, yeah, I want to somehow, some way, not take forever to do all these little layers, but I do wanna see what the layers look like instead of just stacking all the gears on top of each other. You may not even be able to tell, I'm not sure. Maybe some of you have already done this, I'm not sure. But we're gonna find out. And I love this mold. And I heard it was sold out, but I'm finding out that I think you can still get it. If I can find it during the time of this video release, I will link it below. Um, sometimes if it's sold out in Amazon or Timu or wherever, uh, they won't even let you have a link to it. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'll do my best to try to find it, but I know it got really popular and everybody was snagging it and now some people can't find it. So I hope I could find it for you. So I'm just gonna get this all put in here and I'll speed up the rest, get it cured with the light and move on to step two. And I'll come back after my resin is, is mixed and debubbled. I've got my resin mixed up and debubbled. Now, if you do get a vacuum chamber, this does take, you know, a few more minutes than your normal casting resin does, but it does work. Gets the bubbles out of that thick resin. So 
I love that thing. And I know a lot of you, looks like you guys have purchased it too. So let me know what you think. Like I said, I don't get anything from that company. They don't even know that I purchased their product. So it's definitely not a paid thing. Um, it's just, I really like their product. And it made my blooms amazing. Now I want to make blooms all the time, but I know you guys will get bored with blooms all the time. So I'm not going to do that to you. All right, I'm just getting off all the little bits of glitter and little pieces that I don't want in there before I pour my first layer. All right, I'm just gonna pour it very carefully so I don't incorporate, and this is two ounces, so um, yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna need more or not because this is like beveled everywhere. So I don't know if it's gonna get everywhere. I just don't wanna lay my gears right onto the clock again like I did the first time. Not that I felt them, I didn't feel them on the first clock that I made. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it in layers this time and see what happens. I think this if I remember correctly, I'd have to go back and watch. I think it holds twelve ounces. I think that's all I'm gonna do in here. I'm just gonna let it sit. Um oh no see it's draining down that way. So I will need more. This is deeper at this end, so it is draining that way. So I probably just, I'll just put the two ounces in. It's no big deal. I'll probably do like four layers, I'm thinking. All right, I'm going to get this cured and then we'll start setting some gears in there. I just got it out of the curing machine. It was in there for about an hour, so it's nice and firm, good enough to pour on. So before I mix up my next couple ounces, I'm just gonna take some gears out of here and start placing them in randomly, of course. Oh, that one looks, it was stuck together, I didn't realize. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this, I'll fast forward because it can be a little bit boring. So what I'm gonna do is kind of keep them, like the last one I packed together pretty good, but because I'm gonna do layers, I think on the second layer, what I'll do is go in all these other gaps. So you'll get that 3D effect. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, I'm gonna mix up some resin. I should have done it before, but I didn't know that was gonna go so quickly. So um, then I'll just pour it in and recure it. gonna pour it in and hopefully no bubbles will start but I'm gonna get it over all the gears this is 40 milliliters just over an ounce this time the first one I did was 60 milliliters so I think I'm gonna do 40 from now on because I don't want a lot of space between them but just a little bit of space between them And I'm just gonna watch it for a couple minutes and make sure no bubbles pop up from behind these gears. Maybe I'll move them around a little bit. 
is take your whatever you're using and then I'll pop it again for another hour in the curing machine. You never know, I might get this done in one day. I think I'm gonna move this one. It's just a little too big for that spot. Spray it with alcohol, make sure I didn't create any bubbles, and then off to the curing machine. Oh, I see something in there. Oh, it's a bubble. Look at that. All right. Piece of glitter. Finally, the layer five, which is going to be my final layer. So I have three layers of clear, one layer of, I'm sorry, three layers of gears, the first layer of clear. Now my final layer, we're going to mix the brown alcohol ink, and this one is called brown. It's a little bit lighter than the coffee in the brown family from Let's Resin. And I'm using, I mixed up my casting resin for this one. No reason, just it's, well, it's deeper in my cup for one, so I'm gonna be putting it through the the debubbler so it'll be easier and then the uh, four hour cure. Now, 
Don't forget, guys, there is a discount code in the description box for Let's Resin products. You can use the discount code on Amazon and their website, I think. I know Amazon for sure. I'm assuming their website as well. So don't forget to use that discount code for 10% off. I'm just going to keep adding a little alcohol ink until I get it to a nice deep brown. Because it's going to be really light. It looks dark, but it's definitely not dark. Let me grab a paper towel. I want some darkness to it. See, that's that's really, really light. Maybe I might add a couple drops of coffee. Let me grab that one too. Because that one's a little bit darker. I think black or brown will go much better. I had this sitting in my kitchen on the counter and it looked really nice. So I'm thinking this brown one will look much nicer in my kitchen. Although the black one was stunning, I have to say. Hopefully this one will be too. What I'm trying to do is keep it transparent, but also dark enough to penetrate through those layers of, of clear. I will split this into two cups though, because if you put this in your vacuum chamber like this, this high in your cup, it's going to spill over. So I will split it between two cups just because I don't want to clean up a mess in that thing. So far, I'm doing pretty good with it. I use it multiple times every single day. That's where I'm at now. Um, maybe I'll find a brown pigment to go with this. Do I have a brown pigment? That is the question. I do have one. Pigment brown. <laughs> I'm just going to do like two drops. I don't want to go overboard and be sorry about it. But I do want some more color to it. And that, that vacuum chamber takes out the bubbles even with coloring in it, so that doesn't matter. I even did it with glitter in it once. I don't know if you guys caught that video or not. You had to babysit it. It was like really, really boiling with that uh, glitter in there. And I had to manually let the air out four times. Finally, on the fifth round, it didn't boil over. But it took the bubbles out. Let's see what this one looks like now. Oops. I think that's, nah, I'm going to do a couple more drops. Three more drops. Whoops. That's just draining in there anyway. Hopefully this will be enough. gonna have to be. I don't want to oversaturate it. All right, let me run it through the bubble remover and we will pour. So that was weird that I have two different cups in there. This one is just the random one I bought at Walmart and this is the one I measure mine in and this random one at Walmart was taking a lot longer. I don't know if there's just air somehow in this cup. I don't know but this one was done quite a lot earlier. So I'm just going to pour them in. I don't know. I use six ounces. I don't know how much I'm going to need. 
I might not need six. Oh goodness. I'm going to have a lot of extra. Here I thought I was going to need more. I only needed, oh my gosh, three, four maybe. Guess I'm making some extras today. What can I do with brown? All right, well, I probably have two ounces left over. So that was about four more ounces. All right, I don't see any bubbles. I do see a little hair. Piece of dust or something. All right, I'm going to find something to do with the extras. Pop this in the curing machine and we should be demolding tonight. It is ready to be demold, and I even waited till it cooled down this time. I'm ready, but I'm nervous. I want it to be as pretty as the other one now that I don't have the other one anymore. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping I didn't make a mistake, although I can always make it again, but let's see. A little bit of trimming to do. I am keeping this mold. I think I'll do this mold for like occasions, for seasons, instead of always coasters. Okay. Oh, wow. That's a totally different look, but that looks really... Can you tell the 3D effect in the camera? That looks really neat. And I don't think I had the green ones in the last one. So I like the color. Here's with the face on. I like it. It's different, but I like it. I like it a lot. What do you guys think? Can you tell the 3D-ness? I can, but that's such a thin layer between them that I don't know that you could tell in the camera. It is really cool. Let's see about this. Oh, the sides look pretty good. You can barely tell the different layers. You can only tell the different layers by the, uh, the gears being on different layers. I like it. I know it goes with my house much better than the black one. Although the black one was very elegant. I don't know I would call this one elegant, but it's much more fitting for my house, I should say. Now you can, they have all these little grooves on the clock. You can take a paint pen and paint those. Um, I just wish there was a way to fill them with resin, a UV resin in the mold, but that would be pretty tricky. Maybe I'll try it next time to get it on those ledges and to cure it because my hand isn't going to be steady enough, I don't think, for a paint pen. I mean, I could try it and then just wipe it off or whatever. Now, these little clips that come with it, they're garbage. So the last time I did, I ended up gluing this on. I took my E6000 glue, I glued it on, and then everybody was like, how are you opening it? How are you opening it? Well, I took a small um, screwdriver and I popped, popped the battery case open. And I was able to get the battery in, put the case back on. It wasn't like super easy, but it was definitely doable. So I'm going to glue mine on as well because I'm not going to mess around with it and the battery lasts a long time. So that is today's video, you guys. I'm so happy with it. There is not one bubble in sight. It is crystal clear. I don't see any flaws anywhere. And you know I find flaws other than my trimming. But I don't, fall, I don't call that a flaw. Which there's really just came right off. So there's really no trimming either. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think in the comments. I will see you guys tomorrow. I will hope you have a blessed day. 
And uh, yeah, go try a clock, guys. They're super fun. <laughs> Bye.